the wine we were making was in the spirit of Bocastel. I'm Bob Haas, uh, the founder of Tavos Creek, along with the uh, Perrins, actually 1989, 1990. And uh, the whole idea of starting it was more of a challenge than it was a money-making idea. We just wanted to prove that we could make a great blend of Rhone varieties a la Chateau Neuf du Pape in California. When I went to France, I was an importer, but just fell in love with the whole idea. The wine business had enveloped me, actually. Partnering with Perrins, it just sort of happened. Um, I was sort of in between generations. Jacques was probably born in 1919 or something like that. So he was about eight years or nine years older than I was and an established proprietor and well-respected in his, in his region. He sort of took me under his wing as a father would and then it's continued to work out with the way the kids and grand, my kids and his grandkids are working together. I remember in 1971, I guess it was, I was visiting in California, proprietors actually, and Jean-Pierre was with me. We noticed that, you know, obviously there were no Rhone, Rhone grapes, not, and, and in particular Grenache. You know, we said to each other at the time, let's do something someday. So we started looking in California. We wanted to get as similar as possible conditions to Beaucastel as we could, and Beaucastel is calcareous clay underneath the, un underneath the stones that you see in the vineyard. But it took us a couple of years of looking around and found Passerolles. If we were going to do something, we would have to import our own cuttings. So since we didn't want to bring anything in in a suitcase, we were foundering a whole business where the theme was going to be that this is authentic stuff. First, we had to find a place to grow them. And second, we had to bring in the vines. We searched around and found that there was a USDA station in Geneva, New York, that had the facility and put it through the three years of of testing that is necessary in order to get a certification for to bring it in. Recent years we brought in just about all the varieties with the exception of Muscardin. The importance of Esprit is it's the wine we came to California to make. It was really the soul of what we wanted to do was to make a Chateau Neuf du Pop like wine. Pocastel's favorite, if you will, grapes are Morvedre and Roussan. And with the Bocastel Esprit Blanc, we're very similar to what they do in France with 70 or 80 percent Roussan and 20 or 30 percent Grenache Blanc. Esprit de Tabas for me is a European style uh, with, with enough wildness to it so that it, it isn't like it comes out of somebody's lab and yet elegance and grace and an ongoing style so that you would recognize it uh, in a series of wines. It has this special quality that we sense, and the idea is with our vinification in particular, uh, where we use native yeast and where we're aging in large oak and not small oak. We don't want a lot of oak. Uh, we just want to touch. I hate to say we're there because I don't know whether we are as far as we can get yet. I mean, we've only recently started to farm biodynamically. And, and still, and you, we're still young and we're still experimenting. 